and we realize that things ain't rosy as we thought they're gonna be you know we're not gonna get married at the age of 25 you're not gonna get married at the age of 30 but then again you are a sexual being at the end of the day you're a person who desires to have sex and then now that you have internalized the theories the beliefs in your mind around sex on how sex is so impure on how sex is very dirty now you are struggling to come into place with your your desires your fantasies around sex right and what does that develop or implement or give rise to you into your body into your mindset you you enter into a space of shame and guilt where you feel like San Bonan, San Bonani, Du Melani, Nizan Nimara, me, right? Guys, all I'm trying to do now is trying to put myself in the element because, wow, I'm very uncomfortable myself talking about this topic, but at the end of the day, we need to talk about it. Over the years, over the years of the history of our people, as people, uh, it has been internalized to us we have been taught on how we shouldn't talk about our sexual desires on how sex it's very impure on how sex it's something that you should do when you get married right and uh, there's this assumption that when you get married sex gets better but wait it can get worse you yeah, understand the lack of education for sex has been something that has been happening you know living in a world in a country that it identifies it as democracy and that we are liberated in a way because to me my understanding of democracy is that we attack each and every social social issue so basically social science issues they should be I don't know, balanced in a way. <sighs> to take you from that, we started from a point where religion, culture has formed our reality today. Religion and culture has created, has defined the way we live today. Someone can argue and say that it's not really religion or culture. Are the people who are perpetuating the religion and culture? And yes, I would agree with that, you understand? But then again, these people, they have something to refer to. They have a reference, rather, to say that. But then this says this, this says that. We have, as a society, created a culture of shame and guilt when it comes to sex, our sexual fantasies, our sexual desires. In a way that now we're living in a post-modern era where we are liberal in a lot of things you understand we're liberal in terms of how we engage with people we're liberal in terms of how we speak our language has evolved a lot of things for that matter has evolved but then again now let's look into sex and guilt the shame around it right um being a person who navigated through the so-called uh, conservative areas, I was, from grade 1 to grade 5, I was staying in a very rural area. I moved to Tembisa. Tembisa is not entirely conservative, but then there are still a lot of biases happening even today. You understand? And I've learned a lot about... Um, how sex, it used to be a very second thing, you know? And... I remember just to give you, you know, a sneak peek of my childhood, we wouldn't be allowed or maybe, I don't know, be given a platform to talk about sex. The sex was a up in a growing up in a black community. I will excuse my ignorance, but I can only speak about black communities because these are the communities that I've been exposed to. Uh, sex has been a sacred thing. Sex has been a thing that we shouldn't talk about, you understand? And then that now we have internalized that, okay, fine, we're going to start talking about sex when we get married. We're going to start having this conversation when we get married. And the talk around marriage was um, 
pointed or rooted from the heterosexual normative that okay fine only the heterosexual can talk about sex and when you don't fall within those extreme there has been um i don't know a, a def you feel defeated in a way so now that we grow up we understand we realize that things ain't rosy as we thought they're gonna be you know we're not gonna get married at the age of 25 you're not gonna get married at the age of 30 but then again you are a sexual being at the end of the day you are a person who desires to have sex and then now that you have internalized the theories the beliefs in your mind around sex on how sex is so impure on how sex is very dirty now you are struggling to come into place with your your desires your fantasies around sex right and what does that develop or implement or give rise to into your body into your mindset you you enter into a space of shame and guilt where you feel like i feel like this but then again my belief says this you understand so we have and when you think about it we're living in a culture where um the era that we're in sex sells right when you look into media things that are very sexual they sell you understand when you look just look around you you know things that are very sexy sexual appealing they come off as a, a thing that gets a lot of people's attention right uh parading naked and all those things and then now again but then in that moment there's something you we, we have okay wait we live in a culture where sex sells. What do I mean by this when I say sex sells? Looking into the media, looking around you, what's sexual, what's sexual appealing? It's deemed as something that it's, I don't know, it catches people's attention at the end of the day. And then people just want to look into it and then people just want to praise it at the end of the day. Yet, our, our literacy or our understanding or our conversation around sex it's still suppressed in a way you know because you know we come from a we come from an era where sex has been very sacred and well i would understand maybe back in the in those days it was relevant for sex to be sacred so okay fine so okay fine now we grow up right we are we are where we are we understand you realize that actually we didn't learn so much about sex, right? And now we engage with people, be it that you hetero, be it that you homo, anything between those extreme, you understand? And now we have to engage with sexual activities. One thing that I've realized that this shame and guilt around sex is that it creates a lot of boundaries. We, we, we get to a point where we are unable to communicate with our partners because we have felt, we you feel the need that, not really a need, you think that when you're gonna speak about your sexual fantasies, desires, um, ideas, you're gonna be deemed, there's gonna be, okay, there's gonna be slut shaming, you know, this thing that, oh, where do you know this, you know? So the thing is, in as much as I feel like we claim that we are sexually liberated, but then in essence, we are not, you know, because actually the talk around sex is that we're gonna take time we're gonna take time where we get to a point where we create an environment where the talk it's allowed understand because my understanding of this is that sexual education it results into sexual health you understand when we're educated about sex and know that these are do's and don'ts you understand then we as individuals we know that okay fine sexual health is part of us as a sexual being you understand now you understand that no actually i must go and check up i must check up for other things like sti you know the list goes on and on you can name all these stis you no know? um and sti and stds so in that platform and then we were a, a, a one-way thingy it's not about you only you know it's even about the other party you know I would, I would suggest that maybe after the after the deed you guys just talk about it did you like it you know did you enjoy it 
did it did i touch in the right places you know then the other party start now opening up to say no actually i like it this way i like it that way next time we should try this and it's not necessary about physical i don't know the physical sex of it sex goes like even just chilling with the person that to me it's sex like it goes a long way and again this narrative that people lose value nobody lose value we are not properties we are not properties nobody lose value i'm gonna say this again and again and again and again nobody lose value because think about this thing of saying people lose value right um sometimes i feel like relationships they just end not because you wanted them to end so what's going to happen if you get to a point where you've dated more than 18 people and then like you tried how do you feel about yourself you feel like a lot has been taken away from you right then now you are in a self looting um because of the shame we have created around sex we have created a lot of things and Okay, fine. I know we have different beliefs, different um, <laughs> cultures, I understand. And some people, they still prioritize being virgins. But then I feel like this virgin thing, it comes with, it comes with standards, double standards, actually. That's what I'm trying to say. Because... You are into sex you 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 practice sexual activities you know and when i say sexual activities i mean the entire spectrum you know i mean from your aura to down there you know <laughs> yeah you and your person you and your partner you and your sexual partners because it does not necessarily mean that when you're engaged in sexual activities you only do it with people that you're dating with you know if you have would do it the so-called friends with benefits if you have the fb you know you can just like communicate with your fb you know and be very very educated and uh, allow yourself a platform to be safe allow yourself to just to to not get into uncomfortable situations you know because not being so i don't know educated not knowing about what's going on about your body and explore your body know your body you know explore your body tie your body in the right places when you're alone in your room feel your body so that when the other person does something you tell them that no i don't like being touched here i like it this side you understand and you understand that sexual intercourse it's a mutual it's a mutual activity you know it's for two people if you're a girl sometimes initiate it's not always about the guy you know sometimes touch him sometimes allow him you know and we where sex should not feel like a duty anymore it should feel like an art it feel, should feel like something that we all enjoy you understand so yeah and by doing this, by creating this environment where we communicate, where we criticize, we're gonna create an environment of health, you know, where we take care of ourselves as adults, where we say, no, this, this is a red flag. This, we can do this, you understand? And then we take care of ourselves, and then we, we go to these clinics, you know, and take those things, yeah. So I hope to see you guys on my next video, obviously, as I'm going to be delivering more content. So don't forget the very most important thing. Comment, like, subscribe, and share.